everybody. This is a video with Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride of the GAPS protocol, GAPS diet, GAPS.me. Um, I have looked up to her for a very long time. When I started researching what was wrong with me, I found her along with a few other people that had um, information on gut health. It was pretty new back then when I started looking into it. It's becoming more of a popular topic within nutritional psychiatry within um, metabolic causes of disease like cancer, autoimmune, things like that. Um, I realized that diet is a very uh, contagious, not, that's not the right word. <laughs> oh, I can't think of the word, but very uh, intense topic within our community where some people swear by keto, some people say vegan, some people say paleo, whatever. Okay. It, what you do with your body is up to you. I just wanted to bring a different perspective, new information, perhaps to our community. Um, some new ideas. I'm always looking for you guys. Always. I'm listening to all kinds of things about neuroplasticity, uh, diet, coping skills, meditation. I listen to the healing stuff like 24 hours a day, almost. Um, so I just wanted to bring her because I just am fascinated by everything she talks about. But I do realize there's a lot of people, at least the clients that I see that are extremely afraid of food. I developed food phobias from withdrawal. Maybe if I had more information, that would not have happened. Maybe if I knew that my brain is in a very fearful state and I'm um, very open to suggestion and vulnerable and susceptible to, to suggestion, maybe if I had known all that, things would have been different. But I just want to lessen some of the fear and bring you more information. That is what the intent and the heart that I bring to this conversation with Dr. Natasha. So all that said, please enjoy it. I just felt like I needed to give a disclaimer. Like I, I know uh, people are very triggered by food. So if you have like serious food fears, maybe have a loved one watch this for you. And then you can come back to it when you're more ready. Um, but it's really good information. And if you don't want to watch, maybe just visit her website and see what it's about. So um, that's it. Thank you so much. Please subscribe and like please, it helps bring, it helps like the algorithm. So YouTube shoots it out to more people who search for like mental health and mental illness it really helps. So thank you so much and enjoy this talk. Hello everyone. My name is Angie Peacock. I'm a psychiatric drug withdrawal consultant and a healing coach. Today we are speaking with Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride of the GAPS diet. I am always looking for new information to bring to our community of people that are suffering from the long-term effects of psychiatric drugs. And I just really thought diet is so important. It's been important in my own healing journey. I think she's going to have tons of a wealth of information for all of us, uh, small things to try, big things to try if you're having a serious issue. So I'm just really excited to uh, talk to her today. She's also a regenerative organic farmer, which I, it's one of my favorite things to do is to find those farms and go there and usually walk barefoot if I can. So let me read you uh, her bio so we can get started, but welcome Dr. Campbell McBride. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Yes. So Dr. Campbell McBride graduated with honors as a medical doctor in 1984 from Bashkir Medical University in Russia. In the following year, she gained a postgraduate degree in neurology. After practicing for five years as a neurologist and three years as a neurosurgeon, she started a family and moved to the U UK. It was during this time that Dr. Campbell McBride developed her theories on the relationship between neurological disorders and nutrition, and she completed a second postgraduate degree in human nutrition. She special, specialized in using nutritional approach as a treatment and has become recognized of the world's leading experts in treating children and adults with learning disabilities and other mental disorders, as well as children and adults with digestive and immune disorders. She has a book called the Gut and Psychology Syndrome. It's natural treatment for autism, ADHD, dyslexia, dyspraxia, depression, and schizophrenia, where she explores the connection between the patient's physical state and brain function. The book gives full details of the GAPS nutritional protocol. It's highly successful in treating patients with chronic diseases. A second edition was also published in 2010. The concept of GAPS has become a global phenomenon, and the book has been translated into 20 languages. I won't read the rest of your bio because it's so long. <laughs> There's so mm -hmm. much good stuff there, but uh, let's just get started. Can you just tell me, like, when did you start to see, I, I know I, I heard in another interview, you said, I just listened to my patients. So can you talk about that? Like, how did you learn the, of such a strong connection between food and, and health? Well, I was working as a neurologist in my early years of medical practice. 
I always wondered why all the patients with all neurological conditions, practically multiple sclerosis, neuropathies, you know, even, even, even you know, strokes, even some, some emergency situations, mm -hmm. have digestive problems. And the, of course, in the medical profession, we have specializations. So neurologists don't look at digestive system. They invite a gastroenterologist and then follow his or her recommendations. And uh, I wondered at that time. And then later on, when I had to face autism in my own family, I realized that that's where autism comes from, from the digestive system. And I'm very grateful to my life, to my fate, that I grew up in the Soviet Union and got the Soviet medical education, which was very, very different. And uh, in my medical school, we already learned about gut flora. Mm. We already learned that the human body is a microbial community. That there are more microbes in the human body than there are human cells. Mm -hmm. And that the majority of this microbial community lives in the digestive system. And it has to be balanced. It has to have every microbe present, bacteria, viruses, protozoa, fungi, all kinds of creatures must all be there because they all give us something good and they control each other. Mm -hmm. They don't allow any one of their community to get out of control and cause trouble. Problem is we live in a world where we humanity seems to be determined to destroy that balance. Mm -hmm. You know, every agricultural chemical has antibiotic properties and everything you buy in a supermarket is provided by industrial agriculture. So every bite of food you buy in a supermarket has these chemicals. Mm -hmm. So you are basically eating antibiotics for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Antibiotics never kill all microbes. They always kill um, a small group of microbes. And when those microbes are gone, the harmony in the, so the whole microbial community in your body is gone too because they've been controlling somebody. They've been uh, holding that balance and that harmony together. And now there is disharmony. So microbes, which are resistant to that particular chemical, which used to be perfectly beneficial and benign as part of the balanced community, now grow out of proportion and become pathogenic. Mm -hmm. They become pathogens. And when that happens, the digestive system transforms. These pathogenic microbes damage the integrity of the gut wall, making it porous and leaky. Literally holes develop in the gut wall. At the same time, they digest the food that you eat and convert it into millions of poisons, highly poisonous chemicals. Mm -hmm. These chemicals absorb through the damaged gut lining and they, wherever they get to in the body, they cause disease. When they get into the brain, they cause mental illness. If it happens in a small child, in a baby, in the first year of life or first few years of life, the child will develop autism or ADHD, or dyslexia, dyspraxia, attention deficit disorder, oppositional defiant disorder, and plus physical problems too. Allergies are very typical, asthma, eczema, hay fever uh, are very common, and uh, diabetes type 1, juvenile arthritis, various skin problems, all sorts of problems. Mm -hmm. Bedwetting is very common amongst these children and adults. So when I started working with autistic community initially, I've discovered that their parents are ill and their other children, which are not autistic, are also ill because children get their gut flora from their parents. The mother passes her gut flora during pregnancy, her bodily microbiome, because she, her placenta is populated by a rich microbial community. And the father contributes too through, through contact with the mother. Uh, and if he has abnormal gut flora, that gut flora will populate his groin, all the organs in that area, and he shares that with the mother on a regular basis. So that is how children get the flora mm -hmm. from the mother and the father. We now have generations of people with damaged gut flora. And this damage gets deeper and deeper with every generation because of the environment we've created, because our environment is getting more and more um, enriched with all these antibiotic-like chemicals and electromagnetic pollution, contraceptive pill has a devastating effect on the gut flora, uh, junk food because it feeds pathogens rather than feeding you, mm -hmm. vaccinations, all sorts of things, pharmaceuticals, all sorts of things. So if grandparents pass the fairly good flora to their children, then their children grow up in our modern world 
having lots of antibiotics for every cough and sneeze during their childhood. Then the girls go on contraceptive pill, then there are vaccinations and the junk food and all sorts mm -hmm. of other things in the environment. So that generation of people then pass a far more damaged flora to their children than they got from their parents. And with every generation, that situation is getting worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. And this is the epidemic of GAPS. GAPS stands for Gut and Psychology and Gut and Physiology Syndrome. I have two books uh, on this subject. Gut and Physiology Syndrome came out in 2020. Mm -hmm. It covers all the physical conditions, autoimmune disease, allergies, arthritis, hormonal abnormalities, neurological illnesses, um, fatigue, chronic fatigue syndrome, myalgic encephalomyelitis, you know, nephropathy, all sorts of things, all sorts mm -hmm. of things. These are all the physical conditions. And my first book, uh, Gut and Psychology Syndrome, focuses on the brain. Yeah. This one came out in 2004. So quite a long time ago. Yeah. And since then, uh, gaps became a global phenomenon. People all over the world, millions of people literally, are using this protocol for healing, not only from mental illness, but from all sorts of physical illnesses. And now I have, to, have come to the conclusion that all chronic disease is gaps. Mm. This is my professional opinion. All, yeah. no matter what diagnostic label you may have received from the doctor, you have gaps. It doesn't matter whether you have digestive symptoms or not. You may have normal stool, no gas, no pain, no bloating. But when we test your gut flora, we find it's abnormal. And when we start the GAPS nutritional protocol, your rheumatoid arthritis disappears, or Hashimoto, wow. or multiple sclerosis, or nephropathy, or panic attacks, or schizophrenia, or psychotic episodes, or you know any symptom. Because all diseases begin in the gut. The roots of all health is are sitting right there in the digestive system because your body is a microbial community and the headquarters of that microbial community the big government the big ministry is in the gut in the digestive system i mean so i believe you, you fix, i believe you, know, you. Mm -hmm. yeah when you fix the gut mm -hmm. this ministry will fix everything else in your body no matter how far away from the digestive system that may be Amazing. I believe you because I, I'm thinking of like the metabolic cures for cancer. There's a book about that. Chris Kressler is reversing schizophrenia with keto diets. I'm, and no, we'll go into the different diets, but uh, who is the lady with the MS who put a re MS in remission? The Walls Protocol. Like there's so many of these people doing these things. Yes. We all yeah. doing this a similar thing. Yes. And if you ask any, any microbiologist, what is the most powerful influence on a microbial community? The answer will be immediately, food. You change food supply to any microbial community in nature or in a petri dish in a lab. Mm -hmm. Everything will change within hours because microbes produce trillions of babies within an hour, literally very fast. So certain species will disappear, other species will appear out of nowhere and the whole microbial community will change. So because the human body is a microbial community, food is the most powerful medicine for us. There is nothing coming even close. Love it. So in our particular community, I, I, I'm sure you've heard of it before, but psychiatric drugs, long-term use, even just one pill sometimes, completely destroys a human's life. Like the, the people I work with are pharmaceutically injured, bottom line, okay? Okay. They have symptoms such as belly, like their, their, their stomach bloats out. It's huge. We have a theory within the community that there's, you know, all these neurotransmitters in the gut, there's serotonin receptors, there's uh, GABA receptors in the gut. And because we take those drugs, those receptors down regulate, and then we get all these gut symptoms. What do we know about psychiatric drug use and the way that it damages the gut particularly? They are devastating devastating they upset absolutely everything in the in the body most neurotransmitters particularly serotonin dopamine and endorphins are produced in the gut almost 100 percent of serotonin is produced in the gut about 70 80 percent of dopamine is produced in the gut and then they are transported to the brain and to other parts of the nervous system to be used so if your gut floor is abnormal because it's got done or you, you got it from your parents already abnormal and uh, it got damaged further during your life in this world, then you're not producing enough serotonin. You may not produce enough dopamine. You may produce abnormal 
irregular amounts of other neurotransmitters. Mm -hmm. That is why your brain is behaving this way. This is one of the big causes of it. So, and psychiatric drugs, they suppress various things. They do not address the root cause of psychiatric illness, but the root cause of psychiatric illness is gaps. These things are caused by microbes, by abnormal microbial balance in the body, mainly in the gut of the person. All people with psychiatric illness and children with learning disabilities are poisoned people. Their brains are poisoned. All these poor autistic children we have in the world, we have an absolute epidemic of autism. All of them, from my point of view, 100% of them were born with a perfectly normal brain. These were perfectly normal babies. But because they got abnormal gut flora from their parents from day one, they got poisoned. Their brains are poisoned. That is why they're autistic. And what we do with the GAPS protocol, we rebalance that microbial community in the gut. We heal and seal the gut wall. We close all those holes in the gut wall. And we cleanse the rest of the body with the protocol. And there is, as a result, the body starts functioning normally. That Those poisons disappear from the brain. And from that moment on, the person starts functioning normally, developing normally. The child starts developing normally. So that is why autistic children under the age of four, maximum five, have a chance to recover fully from autism. We have thousands of children like that around the world who recovered with the GAPS diet, with mm -hmm. the GAPS nutritional protocol. You just have to catch them young, catch them little, before the brain is damaged seriously by this bombardment, by toxicity, by this poisoning. Because the longer this poisoning goes on, the more physical damage is inflicted upon the brain. What are pharmaceutical drugs? They're poisons. They just, you know, see this highly complicated puzzle and they say, well, right, we'll stick a piece here and we'll stick a piece there and see what happens. So the, the root cause hasn't been addressed. Nothing has been changed. They've just changed the situation and very often made it worse. So um, absolutely, there is no yeah. cure here whatsoever. There is just meddling. They're meddling. Yeah. And all psychiatric drugs, all psychotropic drugs are addictive. Whether they label or the, the leaflet from the pharmaceutical company says so or not, from my clinical perspective and my clinical experience, they are all addictive. So coming off them is very difficult. I have patients who had schizophrenia, who recovered and who are leading normal lives, working, paying their taxes, you know, got their life together. Um, it took them a couple of years to come off the medication because it's addictive. It builds into the functioning of the brain. The brain's addicted to these things. You can't just stop it because the withdrawal can look very much like psychosis, like schizophrenia itself. So very often they just tell you you're relapsed and we need to try a different drug or a combination of something else to suppress that activity. So the first thing we do, we don't touch medication until we've healed the gut. We start the GAPS nutritional protocol. We start the diet with the person. It takes us about six months before the digestive system starts ticking on ni nicely. Lots of symptoms disappear. The person feels better. Not only psychological symptoms, psychiatric, but physical. Because people with mental illness are physically ill very, very much. The, all of them uh, have digestive problems, painful joints, painful muscles, allergies, autoimmunity, all sorts of things going on in the body. Because human body is one entity. The brain is not separate. It's a physical organ. It belongs in the body. Mm -hmm. And they all suffer together as a group from this toxicity coming from the gut. So we remove gaps. The person becomes physically well. A lot of mental symptoms disappear and the person gets stronger, much, much stronger. And then at that point, we choose a drug that the person instinctively feel I can do without. And we slowly and carefully reduce the dose. You can't just stop anything. No. You have to reduce a, a fraction of the dose, whatever. Intuition really helps because every person is unique. For yeah. some people, we can just half the dose and see what happens. Another person says, I'd like to remove a tenth of the dose yeah. and wait for a couple of weeks, see what happens. So we wait for a couple of weeks, then we reduce, remove another tenth for two weeks, then another tenth. So it may take us many months before that drug is out of the picture. But the body needs time to adjust. Then we start on the next drug. Then we start on the next drug. 
that's how yeah. we remove them. Yeah, that's exactly how we work with people too. It's a hyperbolic taper, like usually five to 10% every two to four weeks. And, and a lot of my clients, it takes them two to five, two to three years sometimes to get off like three or four drugs and just Absolutely. go super slowly. So I, I have, this is another question. This is one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you is because I have some really difficult cases there. I would say very fragile and it seems to be because they were given way too many drugs. It confused their nervous system. Um, and then they become sensitive to food. So I know stage one of gaps is bone broth and I know it's cooked slower than general bone broth, but a lot of these people can't even tolerate the bone broth. Their soup, their nervous systems are so hypersensitive. Um, I guess they're sensitive to the glutamate possibly. I don't know. So can you talk about like people that are so sensitized that, um, even gaps, like it just, it just, they feel it and then they get more fearful of food and then their diets shrink even more. I have clients that are terrified of food right now. Like, what do you think is going on when they're that hypersensitive? First thing in the gaps diet, we do not use bone broth. We use meat stock. Meat stock. Sure. Yes. These are two different things. Yes. Meat stock is made with a chunk of animal, nothing removed. It's not just bare bones. You want a chunk of animal. With the skin, preferably if it's a pork, you know, if, or, or a bird, with the skin on, all the bones are in, arteries, veins, you know, muscle, fat, everything's in. So we put, we take a chunk of animal, the best bits of the animal are the cheap ones, the feet, the lower parts of the leg, the spine, the neck, the head, the tails, the belly, you know, all the offcuts, all the inexpensive bits and pieces. You put them in a, in a pan, you fill it up, you cover them with water, add some salt, and then you cook it for about three, four hours maximum until the meat is soft and it's falling off the bones. So you use the meat for your dinner. You bind the bone marrow out of the bones. That's, that's an absolute medicine for, for gaps people. And the stock itself we use for making soup and we drink it. The stock, we drink it. So the, the meat stock has all the amino acids in it from the animal, but without excessive glutamate. Okay. Bone broth is made with bones. Yes. They're bones and it's cooked for days and days and days with some acid to draw the, to, to dissolve the calcium in the bones and draw minerals out. Uh, it can be very beneficial, but we do not introduce it for gaps people for, for the first two years at least. Mm -hmm. We start with meat stock. So that is the most important thing, meat stock. And you need a, a, a chunk of animal from an animal that has been naturally grazing on pasture. Don't look at grass-fed. Grass-fed is, is a lie. Uh, what these farmers do, you know, the label grass-fed in the supermarket is a lie. It's no different than a conventionally produced meat. What they do with, with so-called grass-fed, approved by governments, by the way, um, they lock animals in the cafe, in, 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 a, in a prison, in a barn. The animals never see the, the, the light of day. They're there in the barn all their life. While the farmer plows his fields, seeds it with a hybrid grass, sprays it with chemicals. Then he cuts that grass, holds it into that bun and feeds it to the cows. And as a result, he's allowed to call it grass fed. That's not what we're looking for. Generally speaking for people, particularly with mental illness, what I strongly recommend and for all people with gaps, we must abandon supermarkets. Everything you buy in a supermarket causes disease. You're buying disease. Go to your farmer's market on the weekend in your city, wherever you live or your town. Speak to the farmers who are selling their produce there and ask them, can I visit your farm? A good farmer has nothing to hide. He'll be delighted to invite you to come and visit his farm. Mm -hmm. So then on the weekend, get in the car, go and have a lovely day visiting a farm and have a look where the animals are, how the chickens are kept, how the crops are grown, are there any bags of chemicals lying about? Are there any refrigerators full of antibiotics and steroids? Is there anything that he's hiding? And then you start buying food directly from this farmer. There are hundreds and hundreds of good farmers in every Western country. Honest, decent, loving people who love their land, love their animals, love their soil, and, and they don't cut corners, they do things properly. It's very difficult for these farmers to survive in this world because governments make their lives very difficult. Governments are always supporting industrial agriculture. And the only farmers who do survive have uh, sell directly to their customer base, become their customer base. 
-hmm. Not only you will be getting health giving good food for yourself, but you'll be supporting a good farmer yes. who is struggling in this world. And at the same time, visiting these places lifts up your spirit because you go into a very loving, very positive place and you meet lovely people. You make good friends. Your whole life will change when you stop uh, shopping in supermarkets. Just stop. I think that's the best advice. That's the best advice I'm taking from you because my one of my joys is I just go, I travel full time. So I'm always in different cities and I always go to the farmer's market and I always buy, I mean, my whole fridge is filled with what I bought this weekend. Um, it tastes better. You can tell it's clean. I don't have to wash the lettuce and worry what's on the lettuce. Mm -hmm. I I just got iceberg lettuce and I the guy, the, the farmer sold it to me and I said, I usually don't eat iceberg because it tastes like chemicals to me. And he said, yeah, that's because it soaks up all the water. And he goes, we don't do that. It, ours actually tastes like lettuce. And I, I bought it and it was delicious. Exactly. You, know? you can't so, wash, wash anything off the lettuce. What is lettuce? It's 99% water. Yes. It's in the leaves. It's in the water. It's in the juice. Right. You, you cannot you know, wash it off at all. Right. And mm -hmm. also what we need to understand that food is information. Food carries information. So when we eat food, we're eating information. We're putting information into our bodies. Mm -hmm. What kind of information does food in the supermarket carry from industrial agriculture? Poison. It carries yeah. information of abuse, suffering, pain, disease, grief, greed. How is that information going to make you healthy? When you buy it directly from a farmer, whose farm is filled with love and care, love, love. you are eating love, yes. information of love, and only love heals. Nothing I, else. Totally, oh, I love that. It's beautiful. I agree with you. I, I felt the love. We did a film screening for Medicating Normal at the Weston A. Price Foundation annual um, conference in Virginia, and I had never eaten such delicious food ever. Like, Every all the food, the farmers were there, the Amish were there. I sat and ate dinner with the Amish. They said, You can come to our farm anytime. I mean, it was love. Just even the people that eat the food are more loving. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. It's to recover from any disease, we have to fill ourselves with love because that is the healing energy. That is the energy that gives life to everything on our planet. I agree. I hear your chickens too. I love your chickens. I can hear them. <laughs> Okay, so yes, I have become an organic farmer. You know? Yes. We've yeah. Been... Tell, tell us about that. What is that like for you to be a farmer? It's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. We got this piece of land and it was very damaged industrially because it's been farmed industrially for more than 100 years. There was literally no soil on the farm. In Britain, it rains. So everything looks green. You know, the fields looked green when, when we bought it. But when we try to plant a few trees and we try to dig a hole, we discovered that the topsoil was about this thick. The grass was clinging to it, but underneath it, there were big boulders of flint and clay. Mm -hmm. We could not dig holes by hand to plant trees. We literally broke our forks and broke our spades and our backs. Mm -hmm. We could not do anything like that. So what we finished up doing, we finished up employing a local farmer who came with a big digger and he dug these holes for us with that big machine. And we bought uh, tons of compost, organic compost, and we planted. We filled those holes with compost and we planted our trees into that compost. Mm -hmm. That's how we started. Since then, we've planted about a thousand trees and bushes on our farm. And we've been here uh, now for, for 10 years. It's a paradise. Nature is amazingly resilient. You just assist it and it recovers. It just restores everything to normal. We're now fully um, sufficient, self-sufficient. We do not buy anything. Our farm provides us with plenty of meat, milk, eggs, fruit and vegetables and nuts. And the only things we buy are salt, pepper, spices, and fish. That's amazing. about it. Wow. Yes, that's wow. about amazing. it. Amazing. I everything visited. Provided by the farm. Everything. Um, that's amazing. I visited White Oak Pastures. It's a, a, far, a regenerative farm in Georgia. And I walked barefoot for three miles and they explained to me everything about um, like they even take the blood of the animal and they use that as the fertilizer and that heals the land. A lot of people in the audience might not know about regenerative agriculture, but basically they rotate animals on different parts of the land to, to keep that topsoil going. They don't use herbicides. They don't use pesticides, nothing. It's a chemical free farm everything goes back into the farm and it actually heals the land and fixes the soil 
and then you can taste it. Like you literally can taste the, the food tastes different and it tastes better. It's extremely expensive because they don't get subsidies from the government. But to me, you know, what do you want to pay for? Do you want to pay for insulin or glucose later? Or do you want to pay for your food now? So to mm-hmm. me, it's, that's an investment in my health. Um, but it is expensive, but I, I just, and it, like you said, the, the land feels like love, like you can feel it. It's different. Absolutely. We walk barefoot on our land as well. Yeah. The animals and the birds we have, we started with 12 chickens, which we inherited from a local person who was moving away. Mm-hmm. Now we've got about 200 because they keep breeding. Wow. <laughs> yes. It's, and it's, and it's amazing. And it's, it's a beautiful, most beautiful environment to live in. You know, in the modern world, a lot of people work at home. As long as you've got a computer and an internet, you can work at home. Mm-hmm. And you can do a couple of hours on your computer doing your work, earning your living, whatever it is. But then you come out from the house into the farm and all your stress and all your woes are, you know, they've all gone. Yes. The animals, the birds, the love that they give, the, just the joy, the sheer joy of seeing them and, you know, working with them and helping them is just amazing. Amazing. Beautiful. We had to create soil on our farm. We create soil. We mm-hmm. have big mountains of compost that we make. So we do not dig. There's nothing to dig anyway. We just cover and cover and cover with compost. And that's what we plant we into. It and it's building, 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 building. And uh, everything tastes wonderful. And it's clean. And you can just pick and eat. You don't yes. have to wash it. No. I I even asked some of the farmers, I said, can I eat this without washing it? And she's like, well, we're supposed to tell you to wash it. And I was like, okay, that means I'm not going to wash it. (laughs) You know, I like, I think we need some of that dirt. We're so, of course, so clean. And I mean, that's one thing about COVID that was really disturbing to me. And maybe this is controversial. I don't care, but every store I would go, there was hand sanitizer. And I was like, I'm not using that. Why would I kill my microbiome? So I would act like I was, but Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm not doing that. No. You, you your everything. body is a microbial community yes if you're afraid of microbes you're afraid of yourself <laughs> exactly. we are microbes and microbial communities only work on balance on harmony so the more the merrier yes the more microbes you have the merrier the better yes you know for millions of years humanity that lived on the planet didn't wash anything did we and we walked barefoot and we slept on the ground mm-hmm. you know we never washed our hands There was none of these ideas of hygiene or whatever. Yeah, cleanliness. So it's far healthier than they are today. Yeah. So, so is that permission that I can roll in the dirt later? It's okay. Absolutely. (laughs) I like, I like rolling. I put every place I go, I usually put my hand in the dirt. I put my hand in the water. I wipe my face with it. I smell it. You know, I, I, I just know the value of you know, uh, just breathing in the air that is clean and more purified and nature. I think we're so removed from nature just in our homes. I I rented a house last year for two months and I was like, what do people do in their house? I don't understand. You just sit with no sunlight and just watch TV. You got to be outside to be healthy. Absolutely. Absolutely. We all need to get closer to nature. Yeah, I agree. So let's talk about, um, the GAPS protocol, like, can you take us through, like, what does it look like for someone who wants to do it? Right. The most important part is the diet. The protocol is a program. There are a lot of lifestyle changes that we make. And what you were talking about, about barefoot walking, sunbathing, we never swim in swimming pools. We swim only in natural living waters, in lakes, rivers, and sea, and oceans, because they're alive. It's a living water. It gives you energy. When you Emerge, when you plunge yourself into a swimming pool, that's a dead water. It draws life out of you. It drains you of energy, of life force. You don't want to do that to yourself. So when you swim in a in lake or a river, the process is the opposite. The water gives to you, gives you life energy, life force. So we only do that. And the, the diet is the most important thing. So with the GAPS diet, the, the, the two varieties of the diet are described in this book, the, the, the basic ones. That's the full GAPS diet and the GAPS introduction diet. Mm-hmm. And the full GAPS diet, you can eat the full spectrum of uh, foods that are allowed on the GAPS diet. GAPS diet is based on the traditional wisdom, traditional diets from all over the world, traditional knowledge. We remove all the foods that are difficult to digest and that feed pathogenic microbes. And these are grains 
all grains, whether they're gluten-free, not gluten-free, doesn't matter. All grains have to be out mm. with um, oatmeal. Rye, oatmeal. barley, oats, rice, quinoa, tapioca, couscous, amaranth, the lot. We remove starch, starchy vegetables, so potato family, and uh, exotic potatoes, various exotic uh, starchy vegetables, parsnips are out as well, because starch is a very large molecule under the microscope. It is a concentrated carbohydrate. And majority of this molecule is indigestible for the human digestive system. It's digested by microbes. Unfortunately, both the bad and the good microbes enjoy starch equally. And the same with fiber. You, you'll see in the mainstream um, a lot, still you eat more fiber, eat more starch, they're good for you kind of thing because they feed microbes. Problem is if your body is populated by beneficial microbes largely, they will feed on starch and fiber, get stronger and make you healthy. But in a mentally ill person, the body is populated by pathogens. So they will feast on the starch and on the fiber and make you very sick as a result. So starch has to be out of the diet, that is why we remove starch. So we focus largely on animal foods because the way the human digestive system is designed, animal foods are the easiest for us to digest and the more nourishing. They are, they are the best nourishment for human beings, animal foods, meat, fish, eggs, and dairy. Plants are very difficult to digest for human digestive system. And the more the digestive system is damaged, and in GAPS people, it is damaged to various degrees. The less we can tolerate plants, the more and more we have to remove plant matter. And the most difficult to digest are the grains, the beans, legumes, and starch. So these three things, particularly in the initial stages, are out. We focus on making meat stock, on making soups. We eat the full spectrum of non-starch vegetables, they're fine. And the more they are cooked or fermented, the easier they are to digest. So we focus a lot on cooked and fermented vegetables, but we cook them in the meat stock. And the kind of meat we focus on is the connective tissue of the animal. Problem is, you see, when you say the word meat in the Western world, people see steak, mm -hmm. skinless, boneless breast of the chicken, or right. pure steak with everything trimmed off, you mm -hmm. know, nothing, just pure muscle of the animal. Eating pure muscle of the animal is unhealthy. That's been known in, in human society for thousands of years in every traditional culture. You cannot just eat pure muscle of the animal. Because if you look at your own body, how much muscle there is in your body? Maybe, you know, 20% of the weight of your body is muscle. The rest is connective tissue. What is connective tissue? It's the bones, the joints, the fascia, the tough gelatinous ligaments and capsules of the organs and ligaments that the organs are hanging on, you know, and all the other tough tissues, the, the arteries, the veins are made out of part of connective tissue. Your skin is a connective tissue. You know, all of these things, majority, 80, 90% of your carcass of everything in your body is connective tissue. Connective tissue is made out of largely out of collagen, collagen, elastin, and other elastic proteins. Mm -hmm. These proteins are a magnet for toxins. There's a river of toxicity flowing out of your gut. And a lot of these toxins immediately get attached to molecules of collagen. And that changes their three-dimensional structure. Your immune system goes around the body, surveying it all the time, and it finds this contaminated collagen, looks at it and says, well, something's wrong with you. And first, it will use inflammation to clean that up to clean you up. Inflammation is not comfortable. The place is swollen, red, hot, hurts, and doesn't work. That's what inflammation is. It's a very powerful, very important tool of our immune system, should never be suppressed, never take anti-inflammatory medications, never suppress this, because it cleanses contaminated tissues in your body all the time. But then everything hurts, particularly when you've got generalized inflammation. And if inflammation is not enough because the toxins keep coming and coming all the time, then the immune system will start using other tools. And one of these tools is autoimmunity. Mm -hmm. And what autoimmunity does, it destroys this contaminated collagen and removes it. You start losing collagen. Wow. You start losing your connective tissue. As a result, the, the density of your tissue becomes poorer, 
you start becoming double jointed, you become clumsy, you start bruising easily. You've picked up a chair and you got a bruise on your hand as if you've lifted something very heavy or, or hurt yourself. Uh, because the blood vessels are made out of collagen and they become weak. They, they rupture too easily, they break too easily. So collagen, eating collagen on a daily basis is vital for human beings. That is why I grew up in a traditional society and every woman in my traditional society throughout my childhood, in a, in a school canteen, in a, in a kindergarten, in, in, in university, in, anywhere, will always tell me, bowl of soup every day, not optional, a bowl of soup every single day. And it's not the kind of soup they sell in supermarkets and it's no. in, made with water. That's nonsense. That just causes disease. No, 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 no. That is made with meat stock. Where mm -hmm. you take a gelatinous, a tough piece of the animal and you boil it for a few hours and all that collagen goes into the liquid. And then you consume that collagen and it builds your collagen. Mm -hmm. Because in a person with mental illness, you're losing huge amounts of it huge amounts of collagen. These are supportive structures. This is what holds your body together. This is the structure of you, of your body. That is why meat stock is not optional. That is why eating gelatinous meats, eating all the off cuts, joints, bones, you know, scrape those bones like a piranha. Eat all the soft tissues. So there's no like organs bones. and organs it's too, like heart and liver. Organs, absolutely. Organs, you know, a liver has hundred times more nutrients in it, B vitamins in particular, than the muscle meat. Muscle meat, generally speaking, is the least nutritious part of any animal, particularly breast of the chicken. You know, people in traditional society gave it to the cat or the dog. <laughs> and we're eating it. <laughs> they, they didn't eat the breast. Yeah. They ate everything else, the wings, the legs, the skin, mm -hmm. the fatty bits, the, the backside of the blood, the best, you know, all those sort of interesting and the feet of the of the chicken are particularly nourishing. So if you can find an organic farm who can provide you with chicken feet for making soup and, and organs and necks and heads, that is the best. That makes the best chicken soup for you. So a bowl of soup a day is not optional for a GAPS person because it's collagen. You're rebuilding the physical structure of your body. You're rebuilding the capsules of your brain. You're rebuilding your blood vessels, your nerve structure, your muscle structure, your bone structure. Your bones are made out of collagen, mm -hmm. largely. It's a, the majority of, your, of the mass of your bone is collagen. So when people are not eating collagen, they develop osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is not lack of calcium, it's lack of collagen. Mm -hmm. That is why a bowl of soup every single day. And for people who start with the GAPS diet, we quite often recommend, particularly people who have serious digestive problems as well, if there is diarrhea or if there is ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease or celiac disease or any other digestive disorder diagnosed already, you drink a cup of that meat stock every hour and you add some fermented dairy to it. The milk for dairy that we ferment at home, we, we don't drink milk as it is because that's got lactose in it, milk sugar, which feeds pathogenic microbes. We ferment. When you ferment milk, all the lactose gets consumed and it's a truly lactose-free product and it's pre-digested because the microbes digest all the difficult to digest proteins in the milk and make it pre-digested. So we focus on kefir. Please research kefir. It's all described in my books in great detail. Mm -hmm. yes. The whole thing. So in every cup of bouillon, we add some kefir or we add some sour cream that we've made with kefir at home. And the, the milk to ferment, we get from a good farmer, a loving farmer, raw milk. Right. Milk must not be pasteurized, homogenized, or processed in any other way. Mm -hmm. It should be just milked out of the animal, period. Nothing else done to it. Because milk is alive. It is the white blood of the animal. The same with humans, by the way. Mm -hmm. Human milk going to our babies is the white blood of the woman. Mm -hmm. With red blood cells removed and some other elements removed, it's alive. It's got living force in it. It's got alive and active microbes, enzymes, hormones in it. Uh, various, others, uh, various other elements in, in there. If you pasteurize it, you kill it. It becomes a dead substance, which is difficult to digest for the human body. And the body just struggles to clear that dead stuff out. That is why milk must be raw. You can't get, uh, you can't use raw milk from, uh, synthetic animals, you know, the, the hybridized animals. And uh, the majority of milk in supermarkets comes from Frankenstein cows. 
which were developed in labs and laboratories. Mm -hmm. These are not real cows. Mm -hmm. The Frankensteins, they cannot survive on grass. They have to be fed all sorts of things. They all have cancer, they all have mastitis. They die very young because they are synthetic artificial animals. You want milk from a real cow that mother nature created or, or a goat or a you or some other animal that's available to you. Mm -hmm. And the, the animal should be on grass, on pasture, under the sunlight, under the rain. If the cow is under the sunlight, then the milk has plenty of vitamin D for you, which you need to recover and lots mm -hmm. of other elements in it. The same with chickens, the same with turkeys, the same with pigs, they should all be on pasture. Yeah. No animal or bird should be locked up anywhere. They should roam free. My chickens roam all over the farm, completely free. I can hear them. I can <laughs> They're hear all them. over the place. <laughs> They're probably in the house. They might come in the house too. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's a joy to watch them, to listen to their noises and clucking and singing and, you know, all their social life, very busy social life. Yeah. <laughs> that goes on all over the farm and we see it all the uh -huh. time. And it's safer for them because we have foxes. Mm. It's in the nature of the fox. If, if you build a, um, an enclosed area and you've locked your chickens up behind some net, foxes are very smart animals. They usually get in. And if a fox got into a, a fenced off area, it's in the nature of the fox in some kind of frenzy to rush around and kill every bird. Wow. They just run around, kill, kill, yeah, kill, yeah. kill, until they've killed every bird. And then they take one bird and they walk away. And you find an enclosure full of dead birds scattered around. We don't do that. We leave our chickens to roam completely free all over the farm. By the time the folks try to manage to chase one and catch one, the rest have fled <laughs> because they have plenty of space to flee, to run away. And that way they're much safer and much healthier and they're not bored and they're all over the farm and they do a lot of good jobs for us. They, they, they recreate soil. I love farm. it. So uh, the things that I'm hearing you say are making me think about um, there's a live food and there's dead food. So dead food is like bread, flowers, anything you can buy, you know, in the middle aisles, especially of the grocery store, chips, the things you see on the spinner at the gas station. I don't know how people eat that. It's not food to me. It's a, it's a product. It's a, something that fills your stomach, but it doesn't give you any nutrition. And what I thought was when I was recovering, cause I came off psychiatric drugs and I had a horrific withdrawal. It completely fried my nervous system. And I heard um, people within our community saying, you can eat anything you want and you'll still heal. And I was like, okay, that's possible. But if I'm recovering and my body's trying to turn cells over and heal itself, I want to give it the best information possible to do that with. I want the cells to be like matching my DNA. I don't want them to be just haphazardly because I ate grilled cheese or something, you know? Um, so I'm not perfect though, obviously I'm not perfect, but I did the best I could. And um you're making me want to go and try gaps again and just do it and just, you know, it just, it just makes the most sense to me when we think like, what did my great, great grandmother eat? She did not eat Doritos and Taco Bell. She ate meat from the animal. She ate vegetables from the ground. She pulled them out of the ground and put them in her mouth. She pulled apples off the tree. That's what humans have evolved for, for millions of years was eating from the land walking barefoot, swimming in a stream, taking a bath, not using soap and fragrance and fabric softener and laundry detergent. You're just pounding your body with all these chemicals. And I just don't know how we expect a human body to live and thrive and feel its best in an environment with all these chemicals and toxins. And then you're eating them and you're drinking them. It just doesn't make sense to me. So that's, that's what I think. What, of. That's what we see. Well, that's what we see. Humanity is in a dire state. And the more industrialized and more developed the country is, the worse is the health status of the population. The worst health status is in the Western world, particularly in the English speaking countries. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's absolutely terrible. We have a terrible, uh, terrible statistics of illnesses of all mental and physical, terrible. And all illnesses are becoming younger. You know, we're moving rapidly to a situation when every second child will be diagnosed with autism. Wow. They will be on the spectrum somewhere, they already are. You know, we already have um, quite a percentage of working population of you, working young people who, ha who, who are on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. You have to cope with that situation in, in the Western world. Yeah. The, the health of the population is in a terrible state, terrible state. And the research shows that it takes three generations to stop procreating. Wow. We've hit that point now. Many people have hit that point now when they will not have children. They're not capable. 
of yeah. producing children because yeah. they've reached that third generation of people eating um, non-food things. Mm -hmm. They're eating commercial commodities. They're not eating food. Mm -hmm. Food is what Mother Nature provided for us. And the less we process it, the better it is. Of course, the, um, the animal, the tough parts of the animal have to be cooked in water because you simply cannot chew them. Mm -hmm. They're so tough. Mm -hmm. To make them even chewable, you, you need to boil them for a few hours in water. And it's best to cook them in water. Yeah. So the so it, coming back to the GAPS diet, the basis of it are animal foods. For breakfast, we have eggs and with some fat. The only fats we ever use are animal fats. Vegetable oils are a poison. Ugh. I'm not exaggerating. That no, is I... the appropriate word for these uh, liquids you know, sold in supermarkets. It is a poison for every human being. Never ever buy them, never eat them, never cook with them. And that means you cannot eat takeaway and you should not eat out very often. Yeah. Eat out as little as possible because everything that you're eating out is cooked with these poisonous oils. Mm -hmm. Cooking should be done with animal fat. Pork fat, lamb fat, beef fat, goose fat, butter, ghee. Mm -hmm. These sort of things. The more fat you consume, the quicker you recover from mental illness. That is why, particularly for people who are trying to come off uh, psychiatric medication, I always recommend fat, 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 and fat. You eat insane amounts. You eat a stick of butter with every meal. Not a tablespoon or a couple of tablespoons. You know, you eat a stick of butter with yeah, your breakfast, I... a stick of butter with your lunch, and a stick of butter with your dinner. <laughs> the I, I go through a lot of butter, a lot, a lot. That's good. That's yes. good. Lots of, of lots of butter. Lardo is fantastic. That is the cute on the skin fat of an of a organic pig. Mm -hmm. Usually between the, the shoulder blades of the pig or at the back of the neck, that's the best parts mm -hmm. to, to cure. Anybody can cure it at home with salt. It's very simple. The recipes are in my book. Very simple. And the more of that, that's raw. You don't cook it. It's mm -hmm. just cured fat and you eat it. You just snack with it. It's delicious. Absolutely delicious. Mm -hmm. The more of that you eat, the, the quicker you recover from neurological illness, mental illness, because brain is a high fat organ. Mm -hmm. And the same with hormonal abnormalities, any kind, because endocrine glands are high fat organs. The more fat you eat, the more they rebuild their structure and they recover. And the more they start functioning very well. Of course, when I started talking about fats to my clients, many of them uh, were asking me the same question. What about heart disease? So I've written this book. Oh, yeah, which the heart. explains yeah. what actually causes heart disease because animal fat and cholesterol do not cause heart disease. They reverse it and they prevent it. They heal you from it. Mm -hmm. If you already got heart disease, eat lardo, eat animal fats, eat butter and eggs. You will recover quicker from your heart disease. So please read this book. It will explain to you what actually going on because the propaganda has been going on for a long time. It's mm -hmm. very powerful this propaganda. Talking about mainstream propaganda, generally speaking, talking about mainstream, <laughs> after, after more than 30 years of my clinical practice, I just tell people, you know, whatever the mainstream tells you, ignore turn it. it upside down and you will see the truth. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing to go by. I like that. Uh, it's it's the opposite of what they're telling you. Flip it. Another mainstream propaganda that's going on very powerful at the moment uh, is pro-vegan, pro-vegetarian propaganda. I've written this book to explain why this propaganda, how the uh, plant plants work for humans and how do animal foods work for humans. Please read this book. It's not very big, you know, it's got nice pictures and it explains everything in detail in this book. And it's, if, if you know anyone who, particularly a young person, who is deciding to change their lifestyle to a plant-based lifestyle, give them this book. You might save a life. Because yeah. so many millions of young people now in the Western world are destroying themselves, destroying themselves on every level through veganism. Mm -hmm. Because the propaganda for veganism is very powerful, very seductive, very convincing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I tried it and I felt sicker than I've ever felt in my entire life. And I went right back to eating Western A. Price style mm -hmm. um, pretty quickly. So it, it also makes me wonder, my family is from Poland and actually on the Russian border, Białstok. So I grew up eating soup, borscht, uh, sauerkraut, sausage, liver sausage, like the whole animal is ground up. And I crave that kind of food. If I don't have sausage like three times a week, I'm, 
something feels like it's missing. So it just makes me wonder, like our, our bodies know that like when you eat good food, you, you feel better. Like it's not, it's not such a guess. I think, I think we've just been so bamboozled and, you know, chemically hijacked by sugar, by flour, by pizza, like these things taste great and your brain will respond with dopamine, but dopamine is not health. You know what I mean? Feeling vital. All and of feeling these healthy things, you know, if, if you, if you open the um, food industry magazines, which are only available to the food industry, mm-hmm. it's an inside magazine. It's not available to the general public. You will see literally advert after advert after advert in these magazines for addictive chemicals, Mm -hmm. which will make your product irresistible. That's how they put it. All processed foods have these chemicals added to them that Mm -hmm. turn you into an addict, a drug addict. You are eating addictive drugs. All these um, snacks, all these packets, you know, the drinks, the soft drinks and Processed things made out of flour, sugar, and something else, they all have this chem and bread, bread Bread. as well. They all have these chemicals added. So you're a a drug addict if you're addicted to any particular brand or any particular thing in there. That is what they do, and they're allowed to do that. Yeah. So let's uh really quick, we have a whole bunch of questions from the audience, and we'll we'll go really quick. I don't want you to have to, you know, take a lot of time. But before we get there, so you said eggs for breakfast. Can you say like what eggs and bacon, eggs and kipper, you know, eggs and oily fish, like like sardines, herring, and mackerel are the best fish to eat. Okay. Salmon should be wild. Fish should be only wild. Don't buy farmed fish. Only buy a, a wild fish. And and um, pour, you know, melt a stick of butter, pour it on top of the whole thing, and then mm-hmm. lick the plate after. You yes. <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> lick the plate clean, so yes. it'll be yes. easy to wash. And <laughs> and you don't waste any of those lovely fats and all those lovely juices. And the most delicious things are actually when you're licking the plate. Yes. <laughs> right. After that, you won't be hungry until about four o'clock in the afternoon. It's <laughs> true. But if, but if you are a bowl of soup and drink a, a, a cup of meat stock with that breakfast. Mm-hmm. And if you want to pick up, you drink a uh, meat stock. Into that hot meat stock. So when you go to work, take a, a thermos with you with hot meat stock with you. And take another jar with kefir or, or a sour cream with you to work. So mm-hmm. whenever you're hungry, you just drink a cup of that meat stock and you eat the sour cream. Sour mm-hmm. cream is an absolute medicine for the brain. If you eat a cup of sour cream, homemade sour cream made out of raw cream, unpasteurized, mm-hmm. yes. uh, from a grass-fed Jersey cow or some other natural breed of cow. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's, it's an absolutely beautiful thing. It will keep your blood sugar level and steady. It will remove all cravings for sweet things and for chocolate. Chocoholics, carry a jar of sour cream with you. Mm. You'll remove your chocoholic addictions very quickly mm-hmm. by, by doing that. And uh, just keep drinking. That'll, that'll sustain you. That is the best snack. And drink water. Don't mm-hmm. drink coffee. Don't drink tea. These things knock you out of balance. Mm. They put you on this swing. When it swings you in one direction, one extreme, and then you swing yes. back into another extreme. And then back you fall, go and yeah. All day long. And that is the bipolar disorder. Mm -hmm. They're now putting two-year-olds on medication. I saw that. Simply because these children are living on sugar. Mm -hmm. It causes them to sit on these swings, you know, up and down, up and down. And that is why they're either manic or they're depressed. Or they're manic or they're depressed. The poor children. They finish up on this psychiatric medication, which is Mm -hmm. so difficult to remove afterwards. So do, do, do that sort of thing. If you get hungry, eat a bowl of soup. Our bowls of soup contain not only vegetables, they're made with meat stock always, but the meats as well. And they're all gelatinous. They're ligaments and they're bits from the joints. And it's not muscle, pure lean muscle. It's bits of fat and bits of nerves and arteries and organs in there, you know, the whole thing. So eat a bowl of soup and again, a big dollop of sour cream in your bowl of soup. Mm -hmm. Just dissolve it in there and, and, and eat it that way. Or sauerkraut juice. I, I know that's like stage two or, you st- or three where you start adding that's sauerkraut right. juice sauerkraut later. Fantastic. And for dinner, you have any kind of fish or meat with vegetables. And again, a ton of fat, mm-hmm. a ton of fat. And drink that's a meat right. stock, um, a, a cup of meat stock. I recommend to everybody, to majority of people, particularly people with chronic disease, do not start from the GAPS introduction diet. Start from the full. Learn to cook. Find all the right supplies of food. Restructure your kitchen. 
you know, get into the whole thing, go through all the diophan withdrawals mm -hmm. uh, from addictive foods that you used to eat, like bread and pasta and cakes and whatever else. Um, and then maybe after six months, after you've settled into the full GAPS diet and you feel ready, then you go through the introduction diet. So start it full diet, and then go back to stage that, one. That's right, okay. that's right. Okay. Because the introduction diet achieves deeper healing, but it's difficult. It's yeah. not easy to follow. And if you throw yourself um, cold turkey into it, um, it's very, very difficult. You I made that mistake and I had severe headaches for like a whole week just trying to do stage one. And then I gave up because I was like, I can't do this. It's too hard. I feel terrible. But I'm sure it was the poison leaving my body and just all the bad food detoxing and uh, maybe I wasn't doing it completely correctly. So I really like that. It's really good advice to go back to full and then go back to intro. Okay. So here's some quick questions. We'll go as fast as we can because I, I, I want to respect your time. Um, people are asking about high histamine. They are itchy. They're, um, they're very sensitive to any food that's in high histamine. So then they go and find the low histamine diet. What do you think about histamine and food? Is it just do the full gaps? It is... Histamine is part and parcel of die-off and detox. Vast majority of, my, of bacteria in the world produce histamine, including beneficial and good microbes. They produce histamine. Histamine is produced in your own digestive system. And also your body produces histamine because it's a hormone that your body uses for various functions, for many, many different functions. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of this reaction. Part of this reaction is not only histamine, but many other amines which have not been researched yet and have not yet been brought to the attention of, of people. You know, the only thing that people hear is histamine, histamine, histamine. Yeah, just ignore it and, and go ahead. If, if the reaction is quite serious, then avoid leftovers. Cook fresh every day. Then you will avoid the histamine and initially avoid fermented vegetables such as sauerkraut, unless you can find last year's sauerkraut from somebody, homemade. Mm -hmm. The longer it ferments, if it ferments more than a year, histamine dissipates. Mm -hmm. If it's something freshly made, it quite often has histamine. But the dairy products, fermented kefir and sour cream, usually haven't got histamine. So make them freshly every day, every 24 hours, and just push through. Majority Perfect. of people can just push through. Push yeah. through. Okay, so other people are asking about fermented foods. Maybe they can't handle it right away. Is that histamine related or do they need to add that later? Can you talk about fermented foods? Like when you're first fermented starting, if you're super that, sensitive. That's right. Um, vegetables that are fermented need to ferment for a few months to get rid of all the histamine. So it's best to use fermented uh, vegetables, which you fermented last year. They keep yeah. for about five years. Sauerkraut, fermented cabbage, fermented beetroot, fermented radishes, garlic, chilies, anything. Beets. So any surplus we have in my garden, we ferment. So we mm -hmm. have all kinds of fermented mixtures and, and things. And mm -hmm. uh, initially, uh, if you want to avoid that, you can cook them. Fermented vegetables can be cooked. You can add mm -hmm. a portion of it to your soup when you're cooking. Let it cook for 20 minutes with the rest of the vegetables. That will make it easier to digest for you. It, they'll, they'll still do some good work for you. Um, so introduce those carefully. Mm -hmm. Fermented uh, foods also produce a die-off because they start killing off pathogens in your digestive system. Mm -hmm. And when these critters die, they release toxins. And these are the toxins that gave you your, your individual symptoms in the first place, made you ill in the first place. So your individual symptoms can become much worse initially. Yes. That's called a die-off reaction. We control that die-off reaction by a very gradual introduction of probiotics and uh, any kind of probiotic foods, such as fermented vegetables and kefir and yogurt and um, sour cream. Mm -hmm. You literally start with a drop per day. Yeah. See what happens, how you do. Then another drop, then a bit more, then a bit more. Yeah. And I just want to let everybody know, we are putting the links to all of her books, her website. She even has great little packages on her website that include probiotics, digestive enzymes, the book, to get you ready to get you started. So all of that is in the comments below if you're interested. Okay. Um, some people are commenting about like, I can't afford the full gaps. It's very expensive. What can I do? Is there anything I can find in a supermarket? I, I would argue like co-ops are very cheap. So what do you, what do you think about the expense that people say? Gaps diet is not expensive. It's actually less expensive than the conventional because if you buy a, a, a box of cereal, 
what you bet bought that disease. It's very, very expensive. Cereals are the most expensive thing you can buy. <laughs> Soft drinks are the most expensive thing. Bread is the most expensive thing you can buy because they only cause you disease. Then you go and buy drugs and then you have to buy this and that in it. And then you're sick and, and lots of other things happen and you can't work. So, so you lose. What people need to understand that overall in the West, people have been spoiled uh, by low prices for food. Mm -hmm. Food is, should not be that, that cheap. Food is far too cheap. People will not bat an eyelid to go and buy themselves a new TV set or a car or, or a new phone or a gadget or anything else and spend thousands mm -hmm. on these things. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you sort of pens more for, for a piece of food and they think, oh, that's, you know, food. People believe that food should be cheap for some reason. Food should, be, should not be not cheap. cheap. Yeah. You just budget more but you're buying loving food, yeah. health-giving food, yeah. food that yeah. gives you vitality. Yeah. Yes, your, your food budget will be twice than the, the usual, and that is normal. That's how it should be. That's my biggest expense is food. It's, it is, it's expensive, but I, I choose wisely. I don't pay rent. I don't entertain. I don't you know, get my hair done or dyed or anything. I don't buy fabric softener and all this soap thing. So the money just transfers to what's important to me. Exactly, yeah. exactly. There is a detoxification chapter in all of my books where I explain that all personal care products, makeup, hair dyes, all these colorful bottles that line shelves in people's bathrooms need to go in the bin, yes, in the I trash can. All I of agree. it. All I of it. The, if you cannot, the formula is if you cannot eat it, you cannot put it on your skin because your skin absorbs everything in seconds. When you spray deodorant under your armpit, you can taste it in your mouth in seconds because the poisons from that deodorant are already in your blood and in your saliva. Mm -hmm. The skin okay. is not a barrier. It's a sponge. It absorbs everything in seconds. And these things bypass the liver mm -hmm. because if you've eaten, ingested something, before it finishes up in your bloodstream, it goes through the liver and the liver is a major detoxification organ. It neutralizes many of these toxins. But if you put it on your skin, it's in your blood straight away. It bypasses the liver. Yeah. Our cancer epidemic that we have, a large percent, more than 50% of it is due to these colorful bottles in your bathroom. And all of this nonsense that people do to themselves. Beauty is not all these horrible things on your, that you've stuck on your face mm -hmm. or you've done to your hair on your nails or whatever. Beauty mm -hmm. is good health shining through your skin or through your eyes. That's what beauty is. Mm. at any age yeah. so don't dye your hair don't use nail polish don't use makeup don't use any of it and the best moisturizers for the skin are uh, olive oil coconut oil um, tallow tallow yes. is fantastic tallow. I, I use tallow from the farm that's what i got tallow, okay. tallow is amazing if you have psoriasis if you have eczema dry skin or any other skin problems tallow is the the, the cure for these sort of things and you, you want it from a, a good quality animal from a grass-fed animal mm -hmm. human skin should not be washed with any soap because your skin works very hard to produce oily substances to provide a habitat for your microbial community on the skin mm -hmm. and it's those microbes that makes your skin uh, healthy and glowing and clean and not spotty yeah and if you keep washing off that habitat with soaps with your shower gel bubble bath or whatever else you're using shampoo you're washing off that habitat. You're damaging the microbial community on your skin and you start getting spots and acne and all sorts of other problems, rosacea and all kinds of problems. Mm -hmm. People cause all of these skin diseases in themselves by all these colorful bottles in their bathroom. They're petrochemicals. Mm -hmm. They're toxic, they're poisonous and they remove all the essential things that your body works hard to cover itself with. Human body should be washed with water, period. Particularly babies. Particularly women in the groin you know, mm -hmm. and, and all other places, only plain water. Mm -hmm. The hair should be washed with raw egg yolks. That's the best shampoo in the world. Mm -hmm. I've, been, I've been doing that for many, many years in my life. You just separate raw egg yolk from the white and you use it instead of shampoo exactly the same way. Wow. Works beautifully. I have to try and, that. Uh, yeah. And, you know, moisturizers I have mentioned, apart from the shampoo, egg yolks and uh, any edible cream on your face or your hands, you don't need anything else. Mm -hmm. You don't need to wash your hands with soap. Your hands need a microbial community. They have a microbial. Don't wash it away. Just wash it with plain water. 
unless mm -hmm. you handle something really filthy, mm -hmm. then you can use some some natural but, but lemon juice just squeezed on or, or olive oil wrapped on your skin and then rinsed off will mm -hmm. work as a soap uh, much better than any commercial soap. So here you already will save a huge amount of money by not buying all these expensive personal care products mm -hmm. and going to hairdressers. Those are very toxic places in every yeah. possible way, hairdressers, in every possible way. And, uh, you know, all, all, of, all of these sort of things. Do not redecorate your house for the first two years as you're healing because mm -hmm. you will bring a plethora of poisons in the, into the household. Mm -hmm. Do not use any smelly chemicals, anything perfumed. Air freshener. Do not use conventional um, laundry detergents. Um, do not use dishwasher. GAPS patients do not use dishwashers. They wash their dishes by hand. And the best dishwasher soap is plain um, mustard powder. It degreases, it washes, your, your, your dishes will be sparkling. Is and that borax or, or master powder? What is that? Mustard powder, you know, the mustard. Oh, mustard powder, mustard. mustard. Yes, it's That's it, right, it, it, ordinary, yeah. ordinary mustard powder. You can buy yeah. it online. It's very, it's very cheap. Yeah. You yeah. just dip your, your, your sponge into mustard powder, rub it on your dish, and it and rinse. rinse it and if a little bit is left, it's edible. You're not poisoning yourself. Dishwasher right. does not wash off chemicals. In fact, it's designed to coat all your cutlery and, chemi and, and, and dishes with, with chemicals so they look sparkling. You're eating toxic chemicals, cancer-causing chemicals at every meal if you are wow. using a dishwasher. Dishwashers need to be thrown away by every household if mm -hmm. people want health. Yeah. It all sounds very radical. But it, does, it does sound radical, but I, I, it, it like takes it one step further than I already thought. It's like, oh my God, I thought I was doing good because I'm using vegan, you know, formaldehyde free nail polish and I have natural mineral makeup. No, throw it away too. <laughs> so I, I gotta get away. a little, I need to take it one away. more step further. Yeah. One more step That's further. Right. A woman's face looks so much more beautiful when it is clean. It's true. Without all this dirt applied to it, all this toxic. Well, even people think, people think I'm... Yeah. yeah. People think I'm like 30 and I'm like, no, I'm 44. And I know it's because of the food I eat. Like you can see my youth. If, if I, I, this is controversial, but I went to my high school reunion and all the women, my age, they all were wrinkled like more than me. And I was like, I think it's because I don't use all the chemicals that they do. And they eat really good food. Like I, I apply makeup maybe once every two weeks. That's it. You know? So I'm going to take it a step further. I want to keep looking 30 forever. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay there's one more question and then we will close but it's people are asking about what about candidia what about SIBO when I have these things and then I eat this food I get more reactions and now I'm scared of food and now I don't know what to eat so that's the biggest problem I see people are so traumatized by the withdrawal from the psychiatric drugs their nervous system is hypersensitive they're afraid of everything they're afraid of food they're afraid of beef stock they don't know what to eat and then the fear when they eat, I feel like it might create more symptoms because it's just a spiral. So can you help us with that last point? Candida is a normal inhabitant of the human body. And if you have an overgrowth of candida anywhere in your body, it means your body is cleansing that place. Because candida absorbs mercury, absorbs lead and other very, very harmful chemicals. And if your body cannot remove it itself, it doesn't have enough resources to remove these things safely, it will allow candida to grow in that place because candida has ways of cleaning these things out, which our bodies don't. Mm -hmm. It is a stage. You just have to go through it, mm -hmm. through that stage. Just reduce fruit, reduce anything sweet, um, you know, and eat more fat. And candida will eventually, once that place has cleaned up, the candida will subside and, and remove itself. It is a, it, and it is a normal part of your microbiome anyway. It has to be there. It's important to have it, to have it there. The same with SIBO. If there is an overgrowth of the, in your intestines, your body is in charge. It, it heals itself. You know, when you're getting healed, it's not the doctor, not the pill, not the diet that's healing you. Your own body is healing itself. It's doing the work. And it knows what it's doing at any moment. It's not silly, your body. And if your body has grown a community of microbes in your intestines, it knows that there is a need for it. It's cleaning something out. Mm -hmm. Once that's clean, just stick to the GAPS diet. Eventually, all these microbes will disappear. The whole thing will get rebalanced and you will heal. Just stick mm -hmm. to the GAPS diet. One more thing I will recommend to the community with the mental illness and people who are trying to come off the medication, and that is enemas. 
absolute lifesaver. Please get yourself an honor enema kit. It's inexpensive and it'll last you a lifetime. A good enema kit. They're, they're, they're available online, enema kits. Learn how to do it. In the blue book here, you know, I have a large mm -hmm. chapter on how to use enemas, various varieties of enemas. Vast majority, more than 90% more than of all toxins floating in your body are coming out of your bowel. Mm -hmm. That's where, you know, the cesspool is. Clean it out. 90% of toxins will leave your body immediately with the first enema. And immediately your head will clear up, your eyesight yeah. will clear up, the headache will disappear, the skin will clear up, and you'll have so much energy, you will feel a different human being. So whenever you feel you're sliding back into this toxicity, or you can't introduce a particular food, or you're stuck in any possible way, you know, with your symptoms or something's not just moving in your body, clean yourself out. Mm. It's a good idea for an adult to finish with coffee. First, we clean all the solids out of the bowel with a basic enema solution, which is described in this blue book. Mm -hmm. And uh, once the bowel is empty, there are no more solids left. Then we put a, a, a quart of coffee in there. Mm -hmm. And again, the recipe is there. It's all explained how to make it, what to do, how to mm -hmm. proceed. The coffee, what it does when you finish with the coffee, it flushes your liver. There are substances in the coffee which absorb through the bowel and they go to the liver and they make the liver just cleanse itself. It squeezes the capsule of the liver, the liver flushes everything out. You will cleanse your liver in a powerful way. Many people have bile stones, a lot of them, because bile stones are normal. They're produced in us normally all the time. But in many people, they're stuck in the liver, they're not leaving. Mm -hmm. As a result, the bile doesn't flow and the bile is the way the liver cleanses itself by putting all the toxins in the bile and then the bile is excreted into intestines and these toxins leave through stool, they leave your body. So if there are lots of stones in your liver, your liver is congested, it's, it's, it's uh, toxic and it cannot process your blood properly, it cannot filter your blood properly. So your body fills up with toxicity and you feel awful as a result. A coffee enema will cleanse your liver, bile stones would leave, your liver will just flush itself and everything will kick start in your body. Every, everything will start flowing. It'll be easier for you to remove medications if you continue doing enemas, if you keep your backyard clean all the time, and if you stick to the diet. Excellent. Oh, Dr. Natasha, I just you just reignited my passion just so much today. I've learned so much from you just reading your books. I have the yellow book. I meant to dig it out. It's the yellow book, and I have a cookbook. Um, I'm gonna go again. I'm gonna look at it completely different for this conversation. So I, you, I, the things I'm taking away is love, yourself, information, how you heal the body. I heard this quote yesterday. It said, "Nature heals itself. We just must not interfere. We must not interfere with it." And that's really what I've experienced. Your body heals itself. It does right itself. You need time and lots of love and lots of good food and good information that comes in there. So I just thank you so much for spending time with us. All the links for everything that she does, her blog, she has courses, she has books. Um, there's packages on her website. If you're interested, so much information out there. She's got lots of good videos online. Please use this information for your healing. Uh, we all deserve the best health ever after all we've been through. So and on my website, gaps.me, I'll put it in chat, you know, yep. and, and probably have that. Yeah. yeah, it's it's all in the comments below. Yeah, we put it on Absolutely. Facebook. Mm -hmm. On my website, I have a very extensive frequently asked questions section. Perfect. So any question, please go there. You, you'll Perfect. like to find an answer because uh, people like you have been asking me for the last 20 years questions and I put them all there. Mm -hmm. So you'd like to find the answers. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Natasha. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe and go to her website for her newsletter and blog. It's such excellent information. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your work.